How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're talking about 10 cheap and fast estate cars that cost less than £10,000. My first car was an estate and I am generally a massive fan of estates. They're generally my favourite types of cars so I'm excited to get into this video. But before we do begin, don't forget that I'm in the UK so prices in other countries may differ and remember that whenever you buy any second hand car, maintenance, repairs, insurance, all that good stuff is important to remember. To reduce bias on my side, I've ordered these cars from slowest to fastest from 0 to 60. None have broken any tyres using their brake horsepower figures. Anyway, if you haven't already make sure you've hit the like button, subscribed if you're new, hit the notification bell as well. But without further ado, let's get into the video. First up, we have the Alfa Romeo 159 Sport Wagon, a car designed by the same man that is responsible for the Julia Sprint GTV, Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta, Lancia Delta, and even the Mark 1 Golf, amongst many other iconic cars. It hosts a 3.2 litre V6, putting out 260 brake horsepower, which gets from 0 to 60 in 7 seconds. As it is the work of such a recognised designer, plus the fact that it sits on the same platform as other pretty cars like the Brera and Spider, it's no surprise that in my opinion at least it is a very good looking car and the Alpha V6 doesn't sound half bad either. The interior takes inspiration from older Alphas and was designed specifically to compete with BMW, Mercedes and Audi equivalents in the executive car space. These are generally listed for around £7,000 but they're relatively rare so it might be worth hunting around until you find one that suits your ideal spec. On reliability, the key point owner's note is stretching timing change which means oil change intervals need to be reduced significantly. There are also some electrical and build quality issues synonymous with Alfa Romeo at this point worthy of note so do try to get a test drive in the car you buy to work out what it is that isn't working. Just ahead of the Alfa we have the Saab 93 Turbo X, quite a rare car to get a hold of as I couldn't find many estates available at all but will go for around 8 to 10 thousand pounds. It hosts a 2.8 litre turbocharged V6 putting out 276 brake horsepower and it will do 0 to 60 in around 6.8 seconds. To celebrate 30 years of turbo charged Saabs, the business decided to upgrade their 9.3 to a turbocharged beast, available in both saloon and estate, otherwise known as Sport Combi. It was the first production car by Saab to feature the XWD or all-wheel drive system from Haldex, and also comes in either 6-speed manual or automatic. There's a whole bunch of other cool features on it too, like the carbon fibre look throughout the interior, and the turbo boost gauge which is inspired by the Saab 900. This is a certified sleeper considering its performance, but lack of any noticeable flare over and above what you'd expect from a normal Saab. Owners note these are generally very reliable, but the fuel pump, expansion tank and weak batteries are known issues. The Haldex is also expensive to replace if it breaks, but that would be highly unfortunate regardless. If you're a follower of the channel, you'll know I'm a sucker for a Skoda estate in particular, and the Octavia VRS is definitely one that gets me going, with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 putting out 216 brake horsepower which takes from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. This is the third generation generation Octavia, made available from 2012 with a more angular aesthetic to previous generations of the car. It's not far off the Golf GTI in terms of performance, which makes sense as it shares a lot of its chassis and design with that car, and in VRS spec it gets some good options too, like sports suspension, alloys up to 19 inches, a sports body kit, twin exit exhaust, and a sporty interior with leather seats and a bunch of VRS logos around the car. It's also very practical, as you might expect from an estate, but it specifically comes with plenty of storage components compartments which I can confirm are highly useful. It can be difficult to find a TSI for sub 10k but they are available from around £8,500 with 80k on the clock and you could always go for a slightly less punchy example for less cash if speed isn't a prerequisite for you. The main noted failures on these have been with the DSG for those that went for autos and outside of that the key issue of note is the water pump but these cars are generally reasonably reliable. Next up is the third generation Volvo V70 T6 and though it doesn't have that lovely inline 5 of its predecessor, it does have mad power coming from its 3 litre turbocharged inline 6, 300 brake horsepower to be exact, which gets it from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. In true Volvo fashion, it increased practicality over previous generations as a priority, including more legroom for the rear 
rear seats and a revised rear end which increased storage space by 55 litres. Now obviously this isn't a classic Volvo R estate that we know and love for their performance, but the T6 is the next best thing from a slightly more modern era, and if you care about the aesthetics you can always get an R design model with a sportier exterior. These start at around £6,500 at the bare minimum and 10 grand will get you a 2007 example with under 50,000 miles on the clock. Generally these are considered to be very reliable but the turbochargers have been known to fail, so something to be wary of if you spot any blue smoke from the exhaust or a lack of power compared to what you're used to. In sixth we have the Ford Focus ST Estate which hosts a 2 litre turbocharged or EcoBoost in the words of Ford, in line 4 putting out 246 brake horsepower which takes the car from 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Though it's not quite RS level, the exterior is much more aggressive over the standard Focus, being both wider and lower, as well as getting some more premium features like the alloy wheels. It also gets some fake carbon fibre for the trim, sports seats and some other nice bits of interior trim that match the car's colour. As with the former generation, it comes in three trims, the ST1, 2 and 3, depending on how premium you want your package to be. I actually think the Focus ST Estate has a different allure to it than the hatchback as well, considering it's not what you necessarily expect. There are plenty of STs out there on the road, but the estates are just that little bit rarer and therefore more interesting in my head. 10 grand is around the minimum you'll spend to get one of these, and you're looking at around 80,000 miles on the clock for that kind of money, but prices are generally below 13 grand for good models regardless. There are some build quality issues with these like creaking windscreens, but one major problem was with the power shift automatic boxes, which should be avoided on early models. Outside of that though, there aren't too many majorly common issues to speak of. Just a quick interlude, make sure you hit the like button if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. 85% of you aren't subscribed to the channel and I find that quite painful. So hit the subscribe button and I'd be gassed. Anyway, let's get back into it. In fifth, we have the Subaru Impreza WRX with its two liter turbocharged boxer four engine, putting out 215 brake horsepower, which takes it from not to 60 in 5.9 seconds. Before we go anywhere with this car, please do note that you can get the slightly newer WRX within our 10K budget, the most recent facelift with the 2.5 litre block, but it's renowned for being problematic, hence I would probably recommend going for the slightly older 2 litre instead. It's actually classified as a hatchback, but it's very much along estate lines, as it's the twin sister car to the Saab 92X that was released in the North American market. As an estate, it has slightly less storage space than some of the other cars on this list, but it's still a beast in terms of performance, and is, in my opinion, an ideal daily car. As a big Impreza fan, I actually really like it in a state spec too, despite Saloon actually being my preference on this one, although the interior is pretty boring either way. You can grab these super cheap at under £3,000, and around the £5,000 to £6,000 mark is a good area to look for if you want one in good shape with lower mileage. If they've been harassed, conrod bearings can be an issue, but owners note that these can be reliable from an engine and turbo perspective as long as they're looked after well. Rust, on the other hand, is a key issue that can affect anyone's Impreza, so make sure you get under the car and have a look if you're on the hunt for one. Just missing out on the top three is the E91 BMW 335D Touring, with its twin turbocharged 3 litre inline six, putting out 281 brake horsepower, 580 newton meters of torque, and doing 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. I've spoken about these in plenty of previous videos, so I won't bang on about it for too long, but this generation of 3 Series is rapidly becoming a well-loved gen, thanks to some nice designs and decent popularity, as well as being the last before the 4 Series came in and took over the coupe and convertible models. As an estate, it's a very sizable car, so slightly slower to 60 than the coupe example, but only just, and the practicality makes it very much worth it. The interiors aren't amazing on these, but they're not awful either in isolation. It's more if you compare them to Mercs and Audis from the same era, they're not quite as nice, but you can get some nice coloured leather seats and a long panoramic roof depending on what you're after. High mileage examples are available as low as £6,000 and 10 grand will get you on with 90,000 miles on the clock still. There are some known issues with turbos or turbo seals failing, run flat tyres causing alloy cracks and a few electrical problems. There are also a bunch of parts that were labelled good for the lifetime of the car, which is only in reality around 10 years or 120,000 miles, so the sealed gearbox and timing chain will be key areas to look out for. A very rare car taking third on this list, again so rare that there are barely any available online 
online right now, but you can get them from anywhere between eight to ten thousand pounds. With good examples at around twelve thousand pounds, it's the VW Passat R36, which hosts a 3.6 liter VR6, putting out 295 brake horsepower, managing 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds. Like the R32 Golf from the same era, this is the high-performance VR6 car for the Passat line, and aesthetically, you can see the similarities in terms of alloys, aggressive body styling, twin exit exhaust, and the grill. Technically, it's similar too, with the all-wheel drive layout and DSG paddle shift box, not to mention the interior with the Recaro seats and the R36 logos throughout. As I mentioned, it's a very rare car, and for that reason, again, I actually prefer it to the R32 Golf, and it's also helped those values to remain higher. However, in terms of driving, owners and journalists note it's not a very nice car to drive, despite being very fast, so not quite as fun as the newer Golf R Estate today. The DSG in these is noted by owners as being the main issue to look out for when buying one, so make sure you look out for any potential shuddering on gear changes. However, the build quality is known to be quite high, otherwise in these cars, and they share a lot of parts with other VW Group cars anyway, which makes life easier in terms of replacements. Another VW Group car in second is the fifth generation Audi S4 Avant, otherwise known as the B8, with its 3 litre supercharged V6, putting out 328 brake horsepower, which takes from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. It comes with additional options that weren't available on former models, like the Sport's rear diff, active steering and active damping suspension, as well as some expected features like the sporty body style and interior. As always with S models, it's the middle ground between the standard A4 and the more savage RS4. Though it doesn't sound as good as the B7's V8, it still maintains a supercharger which helps give it a fair bit of extra grunt for a V6. Audi knew the V8 and the V7 wasn't very comparable in terms of performance with competitors like the 335i, so the V6 came in to differentiate the car and carve out its space in the market as a practical performance beast. Nine grand is around the minimum you'll pay for one of these, and at £10,000 you're looking at around 90,000 miles on the clock. The DSG or S-Tronic transmission is known to have issues, as does the water pump and PCV valve, as well as an issue with carbon buildup and misfires, the latter of which is pretty par for the course with VW Group cars. Taking the top spot in this video, the quickest car on this list is the W211 Mercedes E55 AMG, which has a 5.4 litre supercharged V8, putting out 469 brake horsepower, taking it from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, insane for a sub 10k estate, especially as it's the oldest car on this list. On release, the saloon variant was the fastest production saloon in the world and the engine one performance engine of the year in 2003. It's mated to a 5-speed automatic box and also benefits from AMG prepared airmatic suspension, which you can change the modes on, large performance brakes and some nice 18-inch alloys. In testing, the car came out as being faster even than the SL55 AMG, which I've driven and can confirm is very quick. High mileage examples are available for around £7,000 and 10 grand will get you one with still relatively high mileage but still in decent condition. There are some known issues with these like the clutch, air suspension, SBC braking pump, alternator and crankshaft positioning sensor. The list actually goes on. These can be a lot of time and effort to look after if they do have issues but these cars are very much on their way to being future classics and well worth the top spot on this list. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did make sure you leave a like I'd really appreciate it subscribe as well if you're new and notification bell as well massive thank you to the patrons as always and to you guys as well for watching I'll see you in the next one Listen.